market and shares update. In this video, we're talking about the market and what's happening to shares at the moment. Just today, in the last you know half an hour or so, the market FTSE 100 in England is down 1.25%. This is off the back of lots of news. But in the last five days, it's down 4%. In the last month, down nearly 10%. This was since my video I published about you know shorting the market. I actually started short the market about um, on Monday, um, so that would have been that day. I was a bit late to the party because I had like a flu-like COVID around this time, around this 8,000 mark, um, which is a shame because I could have caught more of the value. But anyway, enough about me. What is going on? Well, it's all about this banking crisis. So Credit Suisse looks like it's, it's, it's teetering on the edge of, of bankruptcy. You know, it used to be valued in the tens of billions. Even last Friday, it was valued at seven billion. And UBS are looking to buy it, or you know, it looks like it's really about to go through, and they're going to buy it for about a billion. So that's so much lower than it used to be. I mean, let's have a look at this. I mean, Credit Suisse was a household name one month ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it used to be valued, quite, you know, quite high. 20, nearly 20x what it was um, at the moment, so you know, nearly kind of oh, probably over 100 billion. I don't know the full facts, but it's you know, the UBS are buying it for, for nothing basically. Um, but what the industry is saying is that, like, you know, nobody, the bankers and the traders are not seeing that they're not getting confidence by the back by the fact that UBS are buying Credit Suisse. So the FTSE 100 is you know, it's continuing continuing to fall. You know, it is falling quite a bit. Look at that steep downward decline from eight thousand to seven thousand two hundred and forty eight. What am I doing? I've been I've been shorting the market and I can tell you it's it's been it's done quite well. I'm up about seventy cents in one week. Um you know, it was off a small base. I was in I was off on holiday, as you may have seen from my videos. So it wasn't the easiest to put um put on trades. Also I had a problem with my own bank. I was locked out of one of my banks for I need to find out why. They were having technical problems apparently, but I wasn't able to put on the biggest amount of shorts I wanted to put on. Nevertheless, what is next? Inflation, that is next. Inflation reports happen, I think tomorrow or Wednesday of this week. Very, very soon, that could have an impact on everything. If inflation continues to rise, it could lead the Bank of England and other banks around the world to continue to tighten up interest rates. That will mean that mortgages get more expensive if you um, are looking to fix a mortgage or haven't already and want to know more about you know the different options about mortgages and you know plan for the future better i think you should subscribe to this channel i warned all of my youtube investors in q4 of 2021 that all the economists in the world were wrong and the interest rates were going to go up to between four and six percent for mortgages that's exactly what happened and here we are today going back to this week inflation figures around the next few days and the bank of england meet later this week if they do increase interest rates which i think they will Again, most economists think that inflation is going down this year to two or three percent. I disagree. I believe that inflation will be higher than that, maybe four percent or five percent, potentially even six percent. You know, we're already nearly we're nearly in um, we're nearly in April, and it's you know it was running at nine percent. So for it to fall for no reason, you know, I know energy has fallen, but I personally think inflation is going to stay around four or five percent, maybe six percent um, this year. And I think interest rates are going to increase. What's that going to do to the market and to shares? Well, these banks, you know, I think some of these banks had fixed. Uh, a lot of their um, assets in bonds, in T bonds in America, in UK gilts. These are government bonds. And in 2020, when the stock market crashed, when I shorted last time, um, that was a rock and roll journey. Anyway, when I shorted last time, um, all of the banks panicked. They, they sold all their shares and they went into bonds. Now, bonds decrease in value. If you bought a bond at 0.1%, which a lot of banks did, um, we can have a look here. This is just coming up with the central banks, but a lot of a lot of banks did it. I mean, the Bank of England bought government bonds. You know, the Fed bought bonds in 2020. But anyway, let's go back to the market. So if they raise rates, banks that have bought bonds, you know, for 0.1 or 1% or whatever, those bonds are going to be pretty much worthless. That causes more pressure on banks. And I don't know which banks are, you know, have this interest rate risk coverage. You know, they all have interest rate risk. You know, maybe they haven't covered their positions. Maybe they're, you know, maybe some banks and pension funds and whatnot have really over-indexed and bought tons of these bonds and gilts and whatever, even corporate bonds. And, you know, those are going to be worthless when the interest rates go up. What about for individuals and households? Well, those that haven't, you know, are coming out of mortgages and they have to remortgage. Now, that could cause a lot of pressure on mortgages. 
you know, there could be issues in the mortgage market as well. I've already talked about why I think the mortgage market is going to, and there's going to be housing correction. That's already been covered on this channel. If you want to look at that, you can. What about um, shares? Well, I think shares, you know, there are some good companies out there that are, you know, falling in value, um, to be honest. Like NatWest, they, I, I like NatWest. I think they've done well. You know, they, 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 they posted 5 billion in profits. And, um, you know, this is up from like a period in time where they had a loss of 351. This was, this was, I think in 2020 maybe or 2021. Um, but, you know, recently they posted profits of 5 billion. And look at what's happening to their share price recently. They're getting in the bank basket. People are selling bank stocks. I did a video about could NatWest double. And I was talking about NatWest buying NatWest in October. They went from about 220 up to, what's this, about 306, 310. And recently they've, they've really collapsed. In that video where I said, could NatWest double, I talked about a straddle. A straddle is when you buy an option where you, you, you buy it where you think it could go up or could go down. If you'd have bought a straddle at like 220, 230 and sold it at 300, you, you would have done very, 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 very well. <laughs> that option could have you know doubled or trebled or quadrupled. And then if you'd sold it and you'd kept, if you bought the straddle here, you bought six month options and you bought a put option, you know, you'd be doing quite well now because this drop is enormous. Now, you know, what do I think is going to happen with banking stocks? Um, you can see here that the bank is buying its own shares right now. You can see this, this is a headline. The bank is buying its own shares. When did they do that? They did that on Friday. So they're going to be, I mean, I don't know how much they're doing. Let's have a look at this. How much shares are they buying? Four million shares. They're buying about eight million. No, this was all in the same day, sorry. Four million, two million, that's six. Um, and then there's another four. So that's 10 million shares. That's 20 million pounds they spent on their own shares. That's, that's quite a lot of money here. Uh, that's just in one day. What about the day before? Again, another 10, uh, another 10 million shares. So these guys, NatWest, you know, they, they're thinking that, they're, that their shares are low priced. If they're spending 10 million a day on shares, on share buybacks, you know, that's going to reduce the shares in issue. That's going to increase the dividend yields over time. And, you know, that could be quite good for the company. What do I think is going to happen with shares in, in the bank sector, banking sector? I think they're going to continue to decline because there is so much fear and uncertainty and doubts and insecurity about what is happening to the banks globally. I think this could continue for a number of weeks, potentially, maybe even months. But the fundamentals of some banks, and I've covered uh, NatWest, and I think Barclays is good as well. They're making lots of money at the moment. They have, they're have. they going to do well in the, in, the, uh, in the mortgage market. They're going to do well in the loans market. All right, what, what else have we got to cover today? We have got house builders. Guess what happened with house builders? Nothing. House builders did not get much coverage in the in the uh, in in the budget of 2020 March 2020. All they got was the government was going to soften the rules on some job titles so that they could hire people more easily from abroad. I think house builders are going to continue to fall this year. Now, people have said I'm going to be wrong on this. You know, I'm not always right on things. Of course, I'm not always right. Um, but I think house builders are going to continue to fall. What about other stocks? Let's have some look at some mining stocks. You know, I think they're going to get hurt as well, to be honest. Let's look at Fortier. Well, these are companies that are growing. And look at it. It's fallen 2% in five days. It's up 4% over a month. It's down 25% over six months. And look at the max. When it flowed, it flowed at nearly 200p. It's now 122. It has grown significantly since then. I think it might have had 20 stores, and now it's got like 80. And it's down to 47 million pounds, this penny stock. I love Fortier. I had a Fortier yesterday. I think it's fantastic. I really think it's a fantastic company. But in this market route, in this decline, in this crash, whatever you want to call it, some of these good companies, let's do Kate Box. And Kate Box is a good start. Look at that, it's down as well. 5% in five days, 12% in a month, 11% over six months. But it did go up, you know, went up to 150. Now it's back down. And again, I remember I bought this more or less when it when it um, IPO'd and it's down from the IPO. IPO was 137 back in uh, 2018. And they've gone from less than 100 stores. I don't know how many stores they had when they launched. I think it was less than 100. And, you know, now I don't know how many stores they have. 300 maybe? 400? I don't know how many stores. Let's have a look. Store count. Over 200 stores. They've got over 200 stores. You can see here this, this news article. Kate Box sales jumped 50%. That was uh, that was only like last year, a year ago. Revenues rise. They're, they're a good company. I know this is a... Uh, so, okay, here we go. They celebrated their 200th store in September of 2022. And in that year, their pre-tax profit rose 83% to 7 million. You know, I really think they're, they're, this is a company that's on track to make 20 million a year. Um, you know, and they made 8 million last year, right? 8 million, just have that in your mind, 7.7 .7 million they made in 2022. Let's say they get to 10 million. That's less than 4x. It's like a 4x PE ratio. If you don't know what a PE ratio is, I made a video about this 10 years ago on this channel. Check it out. 
they're at a 6% dividend yield right now, and they're increasing their dividend every year. They're falling in price. I think this is a bargain. I really think KBOX is a bargain. So what am I doing? You might be asking. I am shorting the market. I'm shorting the market. I'm looking at interesting angel investments where I have decreased the amount I'm spending on angel investments. I honestly think there is a lot of value in the listed markets. I think that, yes, companies might fall. Share prices might fall in some companies, yes. But over the long term, I think the companies are going to do are going to do well. And, yes, um, you know, I don't have a lot of free cash at the moment. Um, I've got some things happening. My, uh, I've got some family news, which I can't disclose at the moment. I don't think my wife would like to talk about it. But my family is going to change soon, and my costs are going to rise. And so I can't be investing as much in non-listed companies but i think that listed companies look at the business models you know kbox is growing they've gone from one store in 2008 to over 200 you know they're growing at between 20 and 40 stores a year which means they're going to double the amount of stores they have in the next five years profits could easily be 20 million in the next few years they're valued at 48 million i mean this is just absolute madness you know and tortilla as well you know they're doing so well you know even last night i was in king's cross tortilla and we were there at like 9 p.m or something 8 p.m I don't know what time it was. Maybe it was a bit earlier than that, 7 p.m. It was it was late at night on a Sunday, and it was packed. Must have been 20 people in there eating in this small store. There was a line of people queuing. But these are good companies. Anyway, that's my update. I hope you enjoyed it. Like and subscribe. Remember, knowledge is power, especially right. Kind of knowledge and progress is everything. There were some videos here that will be might be of interest for you or somebody you know. If you know someone that wants to learn more about investing, whether it's stock market investing, shorting the markets, investing in startups, property investing, then make sure to share this. Share the wealth. Share the knowledge and share the channel. I'll see you guys in the next upcoming video. Take care. Cheers.